Welcome back. Global efforts to fight COVID-19 are continuing. Well, China and India have recently given the green light to nasal and inhaled vaccines. It's hoped the immunization will prevent even mild cases of coronavirus. Scientists have, of course, warned that the virus isn't going away anytime soon. And here in this country, experts have warned of a sixth wave. Well, to speak about these new vaccines, we're joined now by Professor Johnny Peter from the University of Cape Town's Lung Institute. A very good morning to you, Prof, and thank you so much for your time. So, of course, it's China that has started um, with the inhaled vaccines. We do know the UK and the US are investigating, you know, the nasal uh, vaccines as well. Just, of course, to essentially they feel because that's where the coronavirus essentially comes into the body, that's where you would need to then begin the defense um, of, of COVID-19 against the body. But how... How realistically and practically, can these work? That's a great question. So um, mucosal, the mucosal route of immunization um, has, is not entirely novel. We've been trying it to prevent other infectious diseases. And there is uh, some licensed influenza vaccines on the market, seasonal influenza vaccines. And the main thing about mu the mucosal route of immunity is you're 100% correct. So it's the main route by which, uh, you know, the infection comes in and it's first contact. But the other thing relates to the immune system. So, you know, fortunately, with the, with the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the positive spinoffs is that people in the public have become familiar with how the body fights infection and the main kind of players involved in that. And so there's been a lot of talk with the traditional roots of vaccination about uh, what we call neutralizing antibodies. So antibodies are one part of uh, the way the body fights infection. But what we've seen, um, it, what we see with mucosal uh, immunity, so in other words, with these inhaled or intranasal vaccines, is that the um, immune system is able to activate more complex parts of, its, of itself so not just these neutralizing antibodies, but also uh, cells that actually line barrier surfaces. So those are special uh, kind of T immune cells that sit on the mucosal surfaces. And one of the hopes for this route of delivery is that the immune system will be activated in a more complex way. Yeah. And this will allow one, as you mentioned, potentially the hope for protecting against just inf infection itself rather than just preventing severe disease. And also the hope is that the um, immune response that is generated will be longer lasting. So in other words, at the moment, what you've seen the public will be aware of is that with our current available COVID vaccines, we are forced to get people to be boosted uh, every few months. And the reason for that is because we are seeing a drop off in people's immune response very rapidly in their blood following booster vaccination. And so we we see that after just a couple of months, you unable, we're unable to protect people from infection. We're still very good. It's the vaccines are working exceptionally well at pre prevent, preventing people from getting severe disease that leads them to die or be hospitalized. But the problem is until we can stop transmission, we're going to still see the emergence of new variants. Mm. And we're going to still see that a proportion of our population is vulnerable to severe disease. You know, people that have uh, immunocompromised uh, immune systems, so people that have weak immune systems, they're still going to be vulnerable. And so, so the hope with uh, this kind of line of research is that by, by strengthening the immune system at the barrier surface, at the mucosa, we can pretend, pre pre stop this infectious transmission. That is the, the, the kind of hope for these, this, this group of vaccines. Professor, what do we know about the vaccine that has been approved in, in, in China and India? I know uh, CanSino is the one that's been approved in China. Do we, do we have enough information about you know, how it's treating uh, those in, in China? Yes, so we don't have the um, large phase three data. At least we haven't seen that. That's been shown to the regulator, but that's not published. Mm. What we have available is, is we have the data from the earlier studies available. And essentially what they've done is they have taken what is their intramuscular vaccine. So the CanSino Biologics intramuscular vaccine, which has been very widely administered and used across the world, is uh, an, a, a, a vaccine that's got a part of the COVID um, grouped together with an adenovector vaccine. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, for instance, works with a vector called AD26 or adenovirus 26. 
the CanSino one works with an adenovirus 5. And so that, um, what they've done is they've taken that intramuscular vaccine that's already approved, and they've just increased the dose for it, and they've, and they've made people inhale it. So it's a viral vectored vaccine. They've increased the dose and then people breathe it through like a, almost like a spacer device that you would use to use an asthma inhaler. Oh. That's what people are using it. And they're using it in a two dose schedule. And the early data on it looked very promising in its ability to do exactly what I was talking about, which is to activate these um, mucosal immune cells in addition to uh, producing some of those neutralizing antibodies that the original intramuscular one looks at. And what they have, what they've approved it for as well is a top up. So they've approved it as a boosting for the original intramuscular uh, muscular dose route. Prof, just before I let you go, um, it, it may seem like it's, it's, it's quite trivial the reasons why some people would not want to get the vaccine as it's been administered so far, which is by injection. Um, but then this essentially provides an alternative to those who do not take kindly to or whose bodies don't take kindly to or react properly to getting injected. Would you say that this is probably something that could then help with a growth and number of people getting vaccinated, those who either haven't been yet or those that have not gone back for a second or a booster? That's a very good question. I mean, that speaks really to uh, side effects of the vaccine or adverse events. Um, and one of the things that we've seen in these early trials with some of these intranasal candidates is we have seen they are very, very well tolerated. So we have seen um, reduced uh, vaccine side effects compared to the intramuscular route. However, what is not clear because these vaccines have not been you know, widely used is for some of the very, very rare and more severe adverse events that we've recently, um, you know, the National Advisory Committee on Vaccines, we've had to, we've reported them to the public. Um, we have not really seen these nasal vaccines in as so many people as we have the intramuscular ones mm. to see whether some of these rare events that are potentially driven by, you know, the fact that this, this is a COVID vaccine itself, potentially those sorts of things. We haven't seen it in, a, in enough people to really be sure, but you're 100% correct that one of the hopes is that, you know, because this is not always going systemically being injected into the body, that's mainly focused on trying to make an immune mis response in the mucosa, that potentially this could be better tolerated and be another good option for people that either have not been vaccinated or feel some hesitancy towards uh, getting vaccine because of concerns around adverse events. 100% correct. Wow. Professor, we'll leave it there with you, but thank you so much for joining us and just helping us unpack, um, of course, I think the next step in the protection against COVID-19. That is Professor Johnny Peter from the University of Cape Town's Lung Institute.